Hey Adventurers, so today is going to be another trope discussion video. This will be specifically on the Here Comes the Cavalry trope. This is a video that I've actually had an idea to do for quite a while. Several, it's been several months now actually. But I didn't do it until now, obviously. But what's interesting is uh, I probably normally wouldn't have done it so close together with this other trope discussion video that Kate and I just did, which was on the resurrection trope, except that I had already been planning this video, and so I was like, well, I might as well get this one out as well. So, for my discussion on the Here Comes the Cavalry trope, I will, I'll, I'll go through what I think makes it work, what doesn't make it work, and then I'll give some examples. I, all of the examples I will save till the end, and those will be spoiler examples. I will be talking spoilers for all the examples that I am using. I will make sure I warn you again before I get there. But before I jump right into this, this is a good time to mention that if you're liking what you're seeing from a narrative adventurer, we'd really appreciate it if you would like, comment, and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Now we will get back into the video. So overall, I'm pretty neutral when it comes to this trope. I neither love it nor hate it. It doesn't specifically make me want to pick up a book, nor does it specifically not make me not want to pick up a book. Most of the time, I don't even know that it's in the book until I read it until I read the book and find it, or watch the movie and find it in there. And this is one that I, the reason why I've been thinking about it is because I did come across it in several different examples, and some of them did it really well, some of them didn't do it very well, some of them did it okay, and just the difference of, wow, why did this work, but it didn't work here, and it's basically exactly the same thing. And so I'll get into that a little bit. When does it work? Obviously, this is a rather important question to ask. When does, when can the cal Here Comes the Cavalry trope be used and have it done well? Well, first off, it has to be set up for. The groundwork for this trope has to be laid early in the story or else it literally comes out of nowhere and doesn't make sense. And you can pick apart, wait a second, why did, why did this happen here? How does this possible? It doesn't work with the story, with the world, it doesn't make sense. But while that's true, it isn't the most important part of making this trope work. The most important, important part is that it has to coincide with the completion of the character arc, or rather it has to not coincide with it because that makes you think that they're happening at the exact same time, but rather it has to take place just after the completion of the character arc. And I'll get more into that in a second here. So what, is, what exactly does that mean? When following, I'm just gonna use this same exact example, although it does apply for other examples as well, but when following one character or a single character, they have to come to the culmination of their arc. They have to have, they have had to decide which way they're going to go. And even when making this decision, the trope, the here comes a cavalry trope, it cannot arrive until after the decision has been made. So if, to, if a character decides to turn back and help his friends rather than run away, the, caval has, the cavalry has to arrive after he's already turned back to help, not before or not at the same time and I'll talk more about that in a second here. So when doesn't it work? Again, it doesn't work if it's not set up for. You have to set up for the cavalry. You give them a reason to arrive, to know to come, and to know where and when to come. And all that has to work out exactly the same way. If you don't have, if you haven't set up for the cavalry to arrive, if you haven't given a reason or a opportunity or any of these things shown the characters who are leading the cavalry charge, whatever it might be, if none of that has been set up for, then when the cavalry arrives, it doesn't work and it doesn't make sense. Once And once more, the more important part is when it doesn't coincide with the completion of the character arc. So if it doesn't coincide or rather sit exactly after the the completion of the character arc, the decision that the character makes. If it doesn't sit right after that, then the, the decision doesn't, or the trope doesn't work. It doesn't end up working out. Again, what does that mean? Well, if the cavalry arrives before or even at the cusp of the character making the that final decision, it takes away from the importance of that decision. Going back to our previous example of one character helping his friends or running away, making that decision. What is this decision that I'm going to do? The cavalry cannot arrive before he makes the decision or else he's just going back because there's no longer any danger if he sees oh here's all the cavalry coming i can go back still be friends with all these people they won't die i won't die i'm in no danger now whereas if he makes that decision without the knowledge of uh there's people coming back to help he makes a decision i'm going back to help because that's these are my friends it's the right thing to do whatever it might be whatever that causes him to make that decision to go back i'll get more money whatever it might be it's his decision to go back has to be made before he learns that the cavalry is coming. 
So here's where I will get into some examples. All of these will be spoiler examples. I will specifically mention exactly what series I'm going to talk about. Most of them should be pretty well known, but there's I will specifically mention them and talk about that specific series and then talk about the next series and so you can skip the series, skip through the series if you want to. I'll make sure to have timestamps for you to skip to. So the first example I have is Top Gun Maverick. This it, the here comes the cavalry trope actually happens twice in a very short period of time, but it actually works both times, and that's very interesting. So the first time is, and again, spoilers, is when Maverick has thrown himself into the line of fire of the other airplane, he gets shot down, but then, so he lands in the forest in the snow and he's running away, and the helicopter comes, and he's about to die from the helicopter, but then a missile comes and blows up the helicopter because Rooster has come. But that fits with Rooster's character, it fits with the lessons that, have, that Maverick has been, being, has been teaching the, the pilots throughout the whole time, it fits with the character of Rooster, and Rooster's already in the air, we know this. And so him coming back and saving Maverick right then, it works. It's set up for, it fits the characters. The decision to have Maverick throw himself in the line of fire to save the lives of the students, It already he's already made that decision. That's the culmination of that character arc. That's the one use of it, or that's the first use of it. And then the second use is they're flying, they manage to steal the jet, they're flying back, they're out of ammo, but they've done their the best that they can. And they're about to die, Maverick, can't evade them anymore, he, the plane's too old, all these different things are happening, and then the other pilot comes in and saves it. But that also is set up for, in that he, you can see his frustration at not being able to be in the skies, not being able to help and protect these other pilots, be a wingman, be a leader, whatever he needs to be, be up there in the skies helping them. And it cuts away from the, from the aircraft carrier for long enough that it gives him enough time to have taken off to have gotten to where he needs to be to save the save Maverick and Rooster. And he does it, and it makes sense with the character, it makes sense with the setup of everything, the disobeying the orders of the of the higher-ups on the ship, because that's basically what Maverick's been teaching them to, which I also don't recommend if you're in the military disobeying your the orders that you've been given. But whatever the case, in this instance, it's set up for it and it makes sense. So that's done with that one. Let's move on to Lord of the Rings. So this is another good example with specifically the ride of the Rohirrim. The Rohirrim come through and arrive at just precisely the right time to save, well actually it also happens in a, uh, with the arrival of the ships from the Umbar pirates, whereas it's not the Umbar pirates, but it's the, it's Aragorn and the Dunedain. That, I'm not going to use that example, it, although it works the same way, it is set up for, it makes sense with the characters, all that kind of stuff. But, so the, the example of the Rohirrim, the right of the Rohirrim, obviously it's a cavalry charge. Here comes the cavalry, it, it fits perfectly, and so I'm going to use it as the example here. We, obviously, this is different than a one perspective storyline where one character is making the decision, all that kind of stuff. It's actually the... Gondor has already fought, has already made that decision to fight and to go into battle, and they're losing. The Rohirrim have also been, this has been set up for since basically uh, everybody has left Isengard, is that the Rohirrim are going to go go to Con go to Gondor because Gondor calls for aid, um, and Rohan will answer, you know, that whole, that whole monologue, that whole sequence. It's very famous. It works. In the books it works better than in the movies because the movies kind of just make it seem like they rode really hard all night long and they arrived just on time, which that's not exactly what it was. It, there was a bit of that in the books as well, but that's not exactly what it was. That, there is more to it than that. So in the books, they arrive unseen, unknown about. The, the Gondorians don't even know if they're going to show up. That's because they are... every entrance into Pelennor Fields is being guarded and blocked by the enemy. But the Rohirrim, Rohan, and Theoden, they take a secret path through the woods that is shown to them by the Pukulmen. Of course, the Pukulmen, that whole sequence, it, I guess they're not Pukul, but Gon Barygon and his tribe of people and everything that are hiding in the woods. All, everything that it happens there. They, that's not really set up for, although it kind of is because there's reference to characters that like the, all the people, or the stone statues of the characters sitting there and going everything. It's, it is set up for and there's some set up for it, but it mostly it just, it's another thing like Tom Bombadil where it's a part of the world and it just exists and that's the way it's going to be. But the characters have already made the decision to go to Gondor and they're going to trust the god Gon and his tribe to lead them safely through the woods to hide from the orcs and from the spies and scouts and everything. And so they do and they arrive just in time to charge the battle. They know when they have to arrive or 
I mean, obviously they're hoping to arrive earlier, but they can't. They arrive when they arrive, and it's almost too late for Gondor, but then they arrive anyways. So that's another good example of it being used. I have an okay example now, which is Gawain by J.P. Harker. So this one is exactly what I was talking about, basically where I took my example from in the why does this work and how does this work and everything like this uh, section earlier in the video. And that's that he makes the decision to go back and help his friends. He, he has the decision to help help fight for the creation of this new realm, this Albion that's going to come to pass. Or he can go back and help his friends. and. Gawain makes a decision, I'm going back to help my friends, and so he runs back and helps his friends. The decision has already been made, everything is happening, they're losing still. And then the cavalry comes in. But it, the decision, his decision has already been made to go back and help. That's a, that aspect of it from the, the reason why I say it's an okay example is because it works with the character. The character has already made his decision, it's already, he's already completed his character arc in that moment. Obviously, there's more that has to happen, but that final decision, that final important decision has already happened, and he's already gone back, and then the cavalry arrived. The problem that I have with this one, and why I say it's only an okay example and not a good example, is because the cavalry isn't really set up for it. There is a little bit, and so it's not, in that way even, it's not a bad example, but it's an okay example. It has been set up for a little bit. problem is that it's also got a fake out death trope and some other things, and that's not the greatest. I, I don't care for fake out or resurrection tropes most of the time. Again, there's some good examples and everything with it's a trope. It can be used well. And this way, it wasn't done horribly, but it was just kind of not enough setup was done. There was a few brief mentions earlier in the book that this type of thing might happen, that these characters are going out and stuff like that, but it wasn't as it, it didn't quite make as good of sense as even Lord of the Rings or Top Gun. So that's why it's only a, okay, it's, it works from the character's perspective, but not from the setup. And then some bad examples. And one of these, I don't think everybody will agree with me on. But uh, the first one, I think everybody will agree with me on, and that's the Rings of Power. Uh, the Cavalry Charge. The Numenorians just happen to ride into battle at the right time, at the right place. They know exactly where to go in, this, in the Southlands, and they just managed to get there just perfectly in time to save everybody's life even though they don't have any idea where they're going and they've just been riding their horses full cavalry charging their horses from who knows how far away and they just happen to come in at the exact right time uh, no it doesn't make sense it doesn't set up there's they don't know where they're they in world logic says they don't know where they're going in world logic says the horses can't run that far and it just in world logic says there's no way that the timeline from well, there's no way that the that many horses and people could fit on the three ships. There's no way that the ships could have gotten to Middle Earth in time. There's no way that they could have figured out where to go, when to go, and how to ride just exactly in time for them. And so it doesn't work from the character's perspective. It doesn't work from the, the setup perspective. Other than, I, I will say, from the character's perspective, it does work a little bit better in that the good guys in the Southlands have already decided to fight. The good guys from Numenor have already decided to fight. And it's just a matter of getting there on time, which is where the setup comes through and doesn't make sense. So that's a bad example. The other bad example I have is actually Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is one that I don't think everybody will agree with me. And it's not the worst example, it's not nearly as bad of an example as Rings of Power, but it is a, a use of the Here Comes the Cavalry trope that I don't think was terribly well done. So it started out okay with Spensa and Skyward Flight deciding to steal the ships of the one guy's family to go out and fight, and they do that, they get those ships, they help fight, they are doing really good. Spencer doesn't have a ship still. So she goes and gets the old broken down ship that doesn't really have defenses or, or offensive weapons or anymore. It's basically just flyable. She can basically fly and that's it. And even that is hard. And so she goes and flies that and gets shot down. And before she can make a decision of what's going to happen next, she's dealing with all these things in her mind. Is it Imbot? I think that's the ship that comes flying up to save her. What? Um, and the reason why this doesn't work is because, again, she hasn't made that decision of what to do next in her character arc. That moment in her character arc has not yet happened to get her to be able to go 
I mean, if she would have decided, you know what, I'm gonna go back to Imbot, and then Imbot flew up to her, that would make more sense. Again, I'll mention more of why it doesn't work. But she didn't make that decision, she didn't know, she was, I, I failed. That was where she was at at the moment. And then the ship came up and she didn't have an opportunity to make that character arc decision. So her character arc wasn't completed. But also it wasn't set up for, and in several ways, because the, uh, what's his name? The, I can't remember what the instructor's name was, but the instructor goes and finds Mbot. How does the instructor know where to look? I mean, he can use some deductive reasoning. Okay, she leaves and comes back every morning, so I know that she has to be close enough somewhere, but she also doesn't go back down, so it's somewhere around here. I don't know exactly, but it must be something. So he can use a little bit of deductive reasoning to find it, but he also doesn't know why would he think there's a ship there. He has no reference for that. But then it also, it's, the reason why Imbot can come to her is he basically says, well, you you said that I can't fly this because my owner said that, o owner told me not to. So I just wrote a new code and said that my new owner said that I could and my new owner is Spinsa. But that is also not set up for because <laughs> the ship never once previously was like, oh, but you could be my new owner. That was never set up for or anything like that. Spinsa kept saying that, but the ship never did. And so again, it wasn't set up for. The ship should not have been able to awake out of its permanent sleep that it put itself in to write that new code. And it just, a lot about it didn't work. It's frustrating because that's, I don't know, I, I wanted it to work and I wanted to, I think that moment is what took my enjoyment of, this is a really fun story that I really do enjoy quite a bit and just is a great sci-fi story to being, that was fun but it could have been better and it should have been. And Sanderson knows this, he, he knows that he, I know that Sanderson knows better than that. And I also understand that it's a middle grade or a YA book, I mean, but it's, Sanderson knows better, or at least he should. So that is my discussion on the Here Comes the Cavalry trope. And hopefully these thoughts made sense, hopefully you can understand where I'm coming from at least in all these ideas. If you agree with me, I'd love to hear some more discussion about this, whether that's other people making videos about it or or it's just in the comments down below. I'd love to hear some more discussion on this trope, uh, on really any of these things that I brought up, the examples if you want to. Just, again, try and remain spoiler-free if possible, or at least mark it as spoilers if it's something that is a spoiler. And we will talk to you guys again soon. Thanks for watching an Internet Adventure. We post videos every Monday and Thursday and have our socials meeting. Socials linked in the description down below. Thanks for watching. Stay warm.